Before the proverbial ink was even dry on the Iranian nuclear deal signed in 2015, Iran has pushed its limits. Slow but consistent breaching of the limitations that Iran took upon itself when it signed the JCPOA in the summer of 2015. Now, it's doing it step by step. While misbehavior like that led President Trump to pull out of the international agreement, Iran's tactics seem to be working. The most recent report of the UN's International Atomic Energy Agency discovered Iran now has 12 times the amount of low enriched uranium allowed by the so-called deal. According to the Institute for Science and International Security, Iran's estimated breakout time as of late September 2020 is as short as three and a half months. That time frame would be early 2021, but that element is just the first of two steps towards a nuclear weapon. The other point is how to assemble a nuclear device. It's not the same. How you um, create the device to start the nuclear uh, chain of reaction. That makes the major question. How long would it take for Iran to have a nuclear bomb? I would say that if Iran decides that it puts away all kind of international respect and oversight considerations and, and go fast forward, then Iran can become nuclear, fully nuclear, meaning with the ability to put a bomb on a missile, etc., between three and five years. Well, tonight I'm here to tell you one thing. Iran lied. In April 2018, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu went on prime time to unveil thousands of documents taken straight from Iran's secret atomic archives. What we found in the archives is a good answer to all those who said, nah, the Iranians are not serious. The archive gave us a clear picture of very serious project, which was very much advanced. For Israel, the question of a nuclear Iran remains a daily exercise. Our philosophy is very clear. We are getting every morning, we ask ourselves, will tomorrow will be too late? If the answer is no, we are going for another day. And when the minute will come, if the minute will come, and we will have to answer ourselves, yes, tomorrow will be too late, then we will have to ask ourselves, OK, what we are doing. It's clear after facing the potential of a nuclear Iran, Israel has been preparing to answer that question for a long time. Well, for more on this story, Chris Mitchell is with us now, directly from Jerusalem. And Chris, you've got to wonder, where did the huge amounts of this uranium, where did this come from? That's right, uh, uh, Gordon, exactly. Uh, they really have gone m far beyond what the Iranian nuclear deal says. And let me just give you a little bit of news right here. Uh, just a few hours ago, Secretary of State uh, Mike Pompeo landed here in Israel. He's meeting with the Bahraini delegation, which came here as well. That's the first. And also with uh, Israeli Prime Minister. Why that's relevant right now is that all three countries, Israel, Bahrain, and the U.S., are deeply involved in whether or not Iran will get a nuclear bomb. And to your question, how did they do that? Well, they do that step by step, as uh, Ronald Bergman said in our report. Now they have about 5,000 pounds of enriched uranium to about 3.5%. And what that means, Gordon, is that it doesn't take them long to get to 90%, which is weapons grade. That's how the physics works. And if they and in the report it said, you know, maybe three and a half months. That's what it means. They would be about three and a half months by taking that 5,000 pounds of enriched uranium and making it nuclear grade, at least for one nuclear device. Uh, I can kind of predict uh, what uh, officials in the Obama administration are going to say on this, that it was a mistake to back out of the Iranian deal. Is that true? Was that a strategic mistake to, to back out of that? Uh, I, I wouldn't say so uh, from my understanding of the n Iranian nuclear deal, and certainly that's not what President Trump and his foreign policy advisors thought. The reason for that is that the Iranian nuclear deal had several flaws in it. Uh, first of all, it never addressed ballistic missiles, which is probably why it, how Iran would get a nuclear device here to Israel. The other thing, it had a sunset clause. It meant that after 25 years, for some of the uh, regular stipulations, even five, five years or 10 for some of those regulations, so it was going to run out anyway. And the other thing, uh, it never allowed inspectors to go to, to military sites. That's a major flaw because some of the nuclear 
research going on that they found in those atomic archives was happening in these uh, mis these nuclear sites, these uh, military sites. So I, I would say, uh, based on what President Trump has done, many of the uh, analysts that we talk to here in Israel would say that the nuclear deal, the JCOPA, as they call it, is uh, was flawed from the very beginning. All right, well, let's talk about solutions now. Uh, I think underlying the Abraham Accords with the UAE, with Bahrain, the, there's an attempt to form an alliance that's actually aimed against Iran and its ambitions in the regions. Do, do you think Saudi Arabia is going to join in, in with that? Could there actually be a coalition that, that coalesces now to say uh, we need to stand against Iran and make sure that they never get a nuclear weapon? I think so, uh, uh, Gordon. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, people have wondered what happens if Joe Biden becomes president or President Trump remains president. And you can look at it either way. If, uh, if Joe Biden did become president, there might be an even added incentive for Saudi Arabia to go ahead, strike a deal with, uh, with Israel because and normalize relations with Israel because they still see Iran as maybe even a greater threat. And if President Trump stays in and the Abraham Accords, I think would just continue to expand. Uh, we have heard from the uh, uh, U.S. Am ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, that there's five or ten nations literally waiting in line to become, uh, and we would expect Saudi Arabia would be one of them. And to your point, it would all be part of an alliance that would uh, be Israel and all these Sunni Arab nations against a bold Iran that may eventually get a nuclear weapon. Well, we were fairly close to war. I, I remember Iran shooting down one of our drones and then uh, a proportionate strike back, and I think John Bolton wanted us to actually launch a war against Iran. He, he uh, was overruled by the president. Um, uh, how likely is it if, if this uranium your, your enrichment can, continues to go forward, how likely are we going to see an actual attack either by Israel or by the U.S.? What, what form would it take and what kind of escalation could we expect afterwards? Yeah, first of all, Gordon, I think the first thing would be whether or not uh, Iran will enrich that 3.5 uh, enriched uranium to 90 percent. If they go ahead with that, that would signal to the world that Iran is going to go get a nuclear device. And I think that would be the point where Israel, the U.S., or other nations would calculate an attack uh, uh, on, a, uh, on Iran. It's a very formidable uh, prospect if they do that, because the Iranian facilities are spread out around the country. Many of them are underground, so it's very challenging for the IDF. However, the IDF has been preparing for this for decades. Uh, we know that. Uh, they have the F-35, they have F-16s, they have drones, they have special operations that could be uh, all be part of an attack on Iran. And to your point as well, what would happen? What would be the retaliation? Well, that's something the IDF has to prepare for as well. But what's happening up on uh, Hezbollah has about 150,000 rockets aimed at Israel on its northern border. Hamas has thousands on its southern border. So if Israel attacks or a co coordination of nations attack Iran, you would expect that Iran's going to retaliate with their own uh, attacks as well, perhaps. We were in Saudi Arabia uh, last September when uh, Iran attacked uh, the Aramco facility. It's the largest oil refining facility in Saudi Arabia. They use a calculation of uh, a combination of drones and missiles. In just about 18 minutes, they literally shut that facility down. So Iran has a formidable arsenal they can use if they're attacked. And if they're attacked, uh, uh, Gordon, we're going to see, uh, we don't know what we're going to see in the, uh, in, the, in the region, but it could be a, a wide regional war. Well, could it expand? You know, the last question, they're, they're giving me a wrap, but I've got to ask this. I know they have ballistic missile technology. Uh, those missiles can actually reach Europe. Um, shouldn't Europe be concerned that this turns into a much wider uh, conflict? Uh, and if Iran is nuclear armed, uh, then the entire civil population of Tel Aviv is at risk, but also uh, the capitals of Europe are at risk. Definitely. I think Europe definitely needs to be concerned about what's happening. And, uh, and actually, but they're having a 
a period, a, a policy of appeasement towards Iran uh, for years. But, uh, but Israel itself has been warning Europe for years, pay attention to Iran and its ballistic missile program. Just in about the last week and a half, Gordon, they've come out with what they call a ballistic missile train, literally where they have several missiles on one train that they can uh, launch at once. And that's very difficult for Israel because they do have probably the, the world's state-of-the-art anti-missile system. They have the arrow, they have David's sling, and they have the Iron Dome. But if they have multiple missiles coming at one time, be very difficult to, uh, uh, to stop them. And finally, uh, Gordon, the last point, I guess, would be that the atomic archives proved that Iran was building a nuclear device. They had all the technology, they had all the knowledge, and uh, it's just a matter of time, many people believe, before they can get that combined with the enriched uranium and a ballistic missile to pose a threat to Europe, Israel, and the world. Well, Chris, thanks for joining us. I, I don't know whether to thank you or, or wonder how I'm going to ever sleep again. But anyway, thanks for, for the report. <laughs> you can get the latest updates at our website, CBNNews.com. You can also download the CBN News Channel app in order to get updated on this. Let me underline that within the ideology of the Iranian version of Islam, they have a uh, doctrine that they can actually accelerate the coming of the Mahdi, which is their version of the, the prophet to come, that they can accelerate that by a conflict. Uh, so within their religious doctrine, uh, they believe that by being this kind of, taking these kinds of steps and, and encouraging war and, and going for war, uh, they can actually accelerate the coming of the Mahdi. That should be a, of concern to everyone. Uh, that is something that um, uh, no other religious group has, that you can accelerate it by conflict. Uh, so that is an underlying ideology. We need to pay attention to it. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.